behind this very British product is primarily American. Hollywood veteran Sam Goldwyn was convinced that he could market the film to American audiences. He put in 80% of the budget, about 20% from Channel 4, and gambled five million pounds to bring King George to the screen. I used to say that my father, when he was in, I used to read him Shakespeare. I go into this because I believe that there's an audience for this picture. People tell me there's all sorts of formulas you apply to movies, but I've never known any other one than this one, and that's the only one I can fly by. And I make a lot of mistakes, too, in the process. But I don't think this is one. films. Overall, production nearly doubled, and the success of Four Weddings and a Funeral encouraged American backers to look to Britain for a high-quality product at a bargain price. These things go in cycles, but I think there is a, a new period of producers pushing the British talent and the British product to America. Um, and given that we're specializing inevitably not in blockbuster movies because we haven't got the natural markets for that um, They're thinking well. There's enormous talent here. It's responsible talent. They're making films under let's say 12 million dollars um, We better go with them you all cheer and you try and gather around Lee with the stopwatch to find out what the time is, okay? In a schoolyard in Essex, so uh, Clockwork Mice is in the final right, stages of shooting right? In many ways, this is a more typical small-budget British film, backed with British money. It's the story of a school for emotionally disturbed children and an inspired teacher. Clockwork is being made by the same team that did Leon the Pig Farmer, director Vadim Jean and producer Paul Brooks, until recently a property developer. It just got to the point where I was going to see films and coming out of them, even great films, being more and more depressed because I knew that was what I wanted to do. And so at 32 I thought, well, jump in or be a coward for the rest of your life. Paul's first film, Leon the Pig Farmer, was made for a mere £150,000. It was possible because cast and crew worked for rock bottom rates and many deferred fees altogether. It was a function of the times, you know, the only way, we couldn't get the money anywhere. But what it's done is, it's given us a platform, cast, crew, director, producer, writer, to go on. It's opened the industry doors. And without it, you know, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now. On Clockwork Mice, the budget of £1.3 million is respectable, right. if far from lavish. Brilliant. And we've cut. Thank you, everybody. On this, I am on 50% of union minimums, Sorry? exactly the same way as everybody else is. This is not a get-rich-quick profession for you. Uh, no. I mean, the, the ir irony of it is I actually associate filmmaking with being poor. Uh, what's the technical term for those clips? Is it clips? Yeah. <laughs> Despite its slim budget, <clears throat> Clockwork Mice has managed to attract a strong cast. Right. John Alderton uh, plays the school's headmaster. Celia and you can meet his social worker this afternoon. Better late than never. Cheer up. I think everybody was on the same deal, which was about 300 pounds a day, and, uh, and no living expenses, and uh, a car into work, and, uh, and lunch. And a small percentage if it makes a great deal of money. But, and that would be nice, but, uh, but you don't even think about that. That's, you do it because you want to do it. And you! And you! Come on, inside! Art Malik Oi, is fast becoming inside. a hot Hollywood property. Come he entered inside. the League of High Oi. Earners with his leading role opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies. You do Clockwork Mice because you like the script, you like the people you're going to be working with. It's not about whether they can afford to employ you because they can't. There's no, there's no way. I mean, I would have taken the whole of Clockwork Mice's budget in, in what I regard as my fee. <laughs> The money for Clockwork Mice comes principally from British Screen, the only source of government funding for British filmmakers. Last year, British Screen backed 20 feature films, a quarter of Britain's yearly output. You okay? Yeah, what's the matter? We don't consider our money to be soft and simply to be taken and lost. And this surprises sometimes uh, our partners because they say, 
but you're supposed to be government money. I mean, aren't you supposed to be virtually a grant? And we say, no, no, no. We'll take a big risk with you on these people or on this subject, but we want to have a good chance of getting our money back because every penny that we do get back is going to be reinvested in the British cinema in the future. I predicate all my financing on, okay, let's figure the film is not going to work. If it doesn't work, are the investors still going to get the money back? If they are, fine, that makes sense. Otherwise, I have to scratch long and hard because I don't want to lose people's money. The, the reason we don't have this industry, as I've said, is because people have lost money hand over fist. I want to make them money. If I make them money, they'll come back, they'll come back. And if w the worst happens, they get the money back. I mean, that's pretty radical in a business that um, is very high risk and where eight films out of ten don't work. As Clockwork Mice nears completion, it's ready for a first screening in front of the most critical audience of all, its investors. I think this is probably the worst screening you, you could ever have. I, so I've never really made a film with proper financiers before, so this is proper financiers, you know, who I really have the power and the say to be able to kind of change the film, I suppose. Because in the past, really, the only people we've had to please are ourselves. I'm too nervous to watch it in there. The film is well received, but investors want some changes to improve its chances for foreign sales. Because it keep it up with, with, with the cutting. At the moment, it's not. It's got some witty moments, but it's not shaped very wittily. Mm. That's the only thing that I don't every, necessarily agree with you on. I don't judgment. think he needs to see him. I that's, don't think he needs you. to see him. That's he I gets think. changed. He gets changed. We he, see him. He, he, he does We see right. him, yeah. and then he goes running. Right. Yeah. So what happens next? Um, back into the cutting room. Yeah, I'm going which, to which is now. Um, I'm going to get a very cheap bottle of Bulgarian plonk. Yeah, and um, immediately and slash away. Yeah, yeah. Well, do we make the structural changes tonight? Yeah. Well, while we've got while we've got the balls to do it. We're trying to get touch him, so thank you. As work continues on Clockwork Mice, it's time to make marketing plans. Why don't we have it there? Money longer. Money longer its costs. The key U.S. market is potentially most profitable of all. We're quoting in excess of a million dollars for the U.S. rights, um, which means that um, we hope somebody will come pay us nearer two million dollars or more than two million dollars if the competition gets fun or more than a million dollars or but equally I'm fully aware that they may not like it, they may not think that it, it can market there, and that they may offer me nothing. Key marketing yeah. decisions must it's be a, made by Paul print. and his sales agents. Oh, no, no, Where should the film oh, be released no, first? It seems to me there are two possible scenarios. One is nobody likes it, and nobody buys it. Um, the second one is that they like it, but they wait until can to see what the reaction is there um, at, a, at a bigger screening. If Paul on, makes a U.S. sale, UK, he'll hope to release the film the there rotations. first. The um, strategy worked well for what, four what weddings and a funeral. The Producers can, believe that a good but, critical I mean, reception in America can have film, huge impact on a film's prospects um, at the British and, box office. I mean, ideally, in an ideal world, we want to open it in the States first <clears> on the basis of if it works, then it'll lead us here. Um, yeah. And there's no downside if it, if it doesn't work, because we can open it here anyway. The best thing you can do is to bring the film into this country with as big a reputation already developed as possible. That doesn't necessarily mean America, but America helps because America is very much watched by the media in this country. So the media will take a film seriously and devote space and time to it if it has already succeeded elsewhere. You have something going here of an intellectual put down of home product that goes on. I'm not talking necessarily about the the, the, the audience, you know, the, 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 the regular audience, but you have a, an almost a press machinery here which is putting down, which wants to put down anything that's British for some reason. They're, I don't know why. And they, uh, they put down British films, and they, they have a, a very odd influence on filmmakers because filmmakers think that they should make films for the critics here.